Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to the closing plenary of today's conference. Apologies for pulling you away from your fire pits. Uh, I'm Sean Ostrovsky, programs with the Rock Foundation, and we are based in Los Angeles. I have the pleasure of introducing Rabbi Mary Zaymore today. Uh, Rabbi Zaymore is the executive director of the Women's Rabbinic Network, which supports and advocates for reform women, women rabbis through issues such as pay equity, safe workspace, and the advancement of women in Jewish leadership. Today, Rabbi Zaymore will discuss the incident of the golden calf. And you may ask yourself, what does the golden calf have to do with our modern challenges? Well, Rabbi Zaymore will lead us in a review of this defining moment in the Israelites' history, and by exploring the Israelites' reaction at a time of stress and confusion, she'll reveal potential pitfalls for our own time. Then we'll look at the building of the Mishkan, the Israelites' portable tabernacle, which represents best practices for communal change and progress. So thank you, Rabbi, for being with us today, and I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Sean. And it's a pleasure to be with everyone, um, and especially uh, thanks to Tzibia and Deborah. It's been a pleasure working with you. Um, I want to start with first, at times of challenge, I think one of the special things being part of the Jewish community is being able to draw strength from our ancestors, both ancient and perhaps more modern, perhaps even your own relatives. As you know, for millennia, Jews have faced great challenge, times of transformation, times of transition. And we're a stronger Jewish community because of our ancestors and the ways that they have confronted these challenges in the past. And here we find ourselves yet again, not just the Jewish community, of course, but the entire world. And I just want to recognize that as we discuss what it means to lead through this time of challenge and transition, that each one of us is affected by this, whether um, very directly or just by the great disruption it's caused. So, we're in a period as individuals of fear, disruption, and the unknown. And so when we look at our Torah narratives, we can find strength there and wisdom. So we're not just leading through the challenge, we're living in it. And of course, I just wanna recognize perhaps living with illness, isolation, fires, the unknown, all of that. And of course, many of our speakers have referred to that. We're going to do a quick journey through two well-known narratives, of course, the golden calf, and also, as Sean said, the Mishkan. They appear in a different order uh, than we are examining them today. Uh, first, there's the Mishkan in the Torah text that stretches over many different Torah portions and interrupted, in fact, by the golden calf. Some of uh, the rabbinic thinkers believe that it should be read actually in the order we're going to examine them today. So perhaps it is the best way to look at this narrative. The setting. The Israelites have just been at Mount Sinai. We were all gathered there. And in fact, if you dig deeply enough into our collective memory, you'll remember being there. We are told that in fact, everybody was there, men, women, and children, those who were born, those who are not yet born, those who have yet to join the Jewish community, we were all there together. Among lightning and thunder, it was a spiritual peak, in fact. And now, shift gears down very, very far, abruptly to the golden calf. Moses is still with God, receiving the Ten Commandments. And the Israelites left below, left with Aaron in charge, are restless. They're starting to be filled with fear. The fear is rising and rising because they don't know what happens next. A group goes to Aaron and demands, make us a God, put it before us. And Aaron complies saying these words, take off the gold rings from your ears of your wives, your daughters, your sons, and bring them to me. That word take off, in fact, is a little bit violent, a little bit jarring. In the Hebrew, you can read break off. The people bring their gold rings. The rabbis debate, was it everyone? Most of them decide that in fact, it's just one group, perhaps just the men. 
it's molded into a calf. The text again is very interesting because it says this calf sprung out of the molding process, almost as if when Moses speak, when rather Aaron speaks about it, it wasn't by design. But the people declare now, this is your God, O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And Aaron builds an altar before it, announcing the next day will be a festival to, this, to the eternal. Next day, the people do exactly that. We know this text as actually the worst moment in biblical narrative, the worst in biblical history, one of disloyalty, of idolatry. It starts with fear, not knowing what's going to happen next. When will this end? Probably sounds a little familiar to what we've been experiencing over the last nine months. They've been asked to believe in and to follow an unseen God, to have faith. And now the man, Moses, their intermediary, has disappeared too. But the backdrop is actually much deeper, and this speaks to our day, in fact. The backdrop shows that the misdeed is really rooted in all sorts of foundational problems, those cracks we know exist. The Israelites have been fear, filled with fear actually, since their very moments in Egypt. They have oscillated between one to stay in slavery and to step out into the unknown to be able to align themselves with God, the future, and eventually be in Israel. It's been a roller coaster for them. During this entire transition from slaves to free people, it is actually a cultural change from polytheism to covenant with God, monotheism. And so it is um, this journey that is so hard for them. You could read this story in many different ways. You could say, well, there was leadership. A group stood up. They acted. They built. What's wrong with that? We all know the end of that story, of course. So we know that they sprung into action that se seemingly seems to have poor or at worst, no thought. They revert to what they knew. In Egypt, they were builders to Pharaoh. They built those gods and those buildings dedicated to gods. And so at this moment of fear, they revert to, time, to what they know. They do in challenge what they've always done. We too are in danger of doing that. Our solutions to present problems can sometimes replicate what we knew before. And this is, of course, problematic. And even worse, because we're digging into our psyches, into our uh, spiritual memories, and we remember what we think worked before, not what actually worked before. And so we revert to ideas and behaviors that are comfortable and feel known to us, even when we know it's not the best path forward. Building, the building of the calf is led by few and imposed on all. It's forced upon the community. That's why that violent language of breaking off parku, the breaking off the earrings is so notable. And why it is notable that in the rabbinic text, there's so much debate as to whether or not um, everyone participated. And the solution is very limited. It's very finite. There's no reflection on the big picture. The sin of idolatry is not merely the disloyalty, but it's a real misunderstanding that they're on a journey to something bigger and better. It's a misunderstanding of the relationship with God. They believe that just building the golden calf, praying it to, to it in that moment, that they're, all their problems are going to be fixed. Their impatience permeates the entire narrative. Containing God, containing the mission, is a singular, limited goal. And so when we look at the golden calf and what our ancestors did so many generations ago, we need to remember that that sense of crisis, that sense of challenge, the uneasiness with transition, that that is universal to every age and in fact, to our own. 
but that discomfort is also a place of great creativity, of resourcefulness, of bringing forth many different leaders in different forms and working together. And so we're going to transition in just a minute to our breakout groups. And we're going to focus on values. Values center us, ground us, allow us to do our work, to probably set aside most of that fear when we're focused on what we have done in the past, what we're doing today, and how we can build the future. And so that is the counterbalance to making what I call golden calf decisions. It's leading with our values. So in our breakout rooms, we'd like you to focus on the question that's going to be posted in the chat in a moment of what have you done, what values have you led in in the past or present? What values are represented in your work? So I'm just going to push you a little bit harder. It's not enough just to say tikkun olam, uh, rebuilding the world, making the world a better place. I know you're all very astute people. You've all been working in this space in amazing ways. I'd like you to take one minute now and just sit by yourself and write that list of the values that fuel your work, both today and in the past. <laughs> 